welcome to the General Chemistry Lab at Boston University. One of the most exciting parts of taking a chemistry course is to observe real chemistry in action through lab experiments. While exciting, working with chemicals and equipment in the lab can sometimes be dangerous too. So we must follow good lab safety practices to keep ourselves, our peers, and our environment safe. First, let's talk about lab attire. All lab participants must always bring personal protective equipment, also known as PPE, with them to the lab. This includes a lab coat and a pair of safety goggles. PPE should be properly worn at all times while working in the lab unless the instructor says otherwise. Note that wearing goggles on your forehead does not count. We know that goggles are not our favorite because they don't look cool or always feel cool, and sometimes they can be downright uncomfortable. But do you know what's more uncomfortable? Getting chemicals in your eyes, flushing your eyes in the eye wash, and the fear of permanently damaging your eyesight. So please, train yourself to be good at wearing goggles at all times when working in the lab. Most times when working in the lab, you will also be wearing gloves to prevent direct skin exposure to the chemicals. When you finish, even if you wore gloves, it is the best practice to always wash your hands with soap before leaving the lab. It is not enough to just wear lab PPE. You must also make sure that your personal attire is appropriate for lab work. Always wear long pants and closed-toed shoes. While cute and stylish clothing such as shorts, short skirts, and sandals are not appropriate lab attire. If you are wearing any dangling jewelry or have long hair, tuck the jewelry under your lab coat and tie your hair back. Dangling items may come into contact with chemicals or open flames or get caught in equipment. Is this student ready to work in the lab? If not, can you identify which part should be improved? Always make sure that our lower body is completely covered. These students' pants are rolled up and their ankles are exposed. They should either roll down their pants or wear longer socks to cover up the ankles. Now that we are in the proper lab attire, let's talk about what other items we can bring into the lab. In addition to proper PPE, we also need a lab notebook and a pen, although some experiments might require a laptop for data analysis. Food, drink, and personal items should not be brought into the lab. They must be stored in a locker or other designated area. Never place any bags or belongings in the lab aisles. We need a clear path so that no one gets tripped over when working in the lab. You haven't had time to eat before coming to the lab. What should you do? Food is always prohibited in the lab. If you get hungry during the lab or a need to adjust your blood sugar, please ask your instructor's permission to step outside briefly for a quick snack. But don't pack a full meal. Of course, the best practice is to eat and rest well before the lab. More lab incidents occur due to lack of sleep or skipping breakfast than from handling chemicals. That said, if you are not feeling well during the lab, please let your lab instructor know immediately. Your safety and well-being are the most important when working in the lab. It is always okay to step outside of the lab briefly and catch a short break for a minute or two. Now. Let's talk about some basic safety features of the lab. As we mentioned earlier, eye wash station is used when chemicals have gotten in contact with your eyes. Upon chemical exposure, quickly move to the eye wash station. Activate the eye wash by pulling the handle. Hold your eyes wide open and lower them into the stream of water. While this could be very uncomfortable, it is crucial to rinse your eyes for at least 15 minutes. This is to reduce the potential eye damage while you are waiting for the professional medical help to arrive. In addition to the eye wash station, there is also a safety shower, which will dump a whole lot of water on you. 
and should be used if large quantities of chemicals have been spilled on you. Once underneath, pull the shower, remove all contaminated clothing, and rinse for at least 15 minutes. It may feel strange to take off your clothes under the shower, even embarrassing, but it is absolutely necessary to make sure that you get the chemicals as far away from your skin as possible and as fast as possible. The first few moments after a chemical exposure are critical. Delaying treatment might result in irreparable tissue damage. If you've spilled a lot of harmful chemicals on yourself, don't hesitate. Run to the shower and use it properly. It can save you from a lot of pain and permanent damage. Hopefully, with the proper PPE and safety measures in place, you won't ever need to use the eye wash station and safety shower in your laboratory. There are also designated lab waste bins, which collect the chemically contaminated waste you generate in lab. As many chemicals we work with are harmful to the environment, we should never pour them down the drain and pollute the city's water system. Some experiments require the use of volatile substances that can generate harmful vapors. Under these circumstances, you should perform the experiment in a fume hood, which has a special ventilation system that effectively removes the vapors and prevents inhalation of harmful chemicals. You have just finished your lab on acid-based titration and have some remaining 1.0 molarity HCl solution. Where should you dispose of this? 1.0 molarity HCl solution is very acidic and is considered hazardous and should be carefully disposed of in a waste container. Also, never ever return any unused chemicals to its original container. You may contaminate a large amount of reagent that way. Now that we have discussed the basics of lab safety, here are a few lab etiquette rules that you should also keep in mind. Rule number one, don't work in the lab if you are unwell. If you experience any sickness or fatigue on the day of the lab, stay home and rest. A clear and focused mind is essential for working safely in the lab. Please contact your lab instructor in advance to discuss alternative arrangements. Rule number two, never work in the lab without appropriate supervision. Always ensure your lab instructor is present before starting any lab work. They are there to assist you with the experiment and ensure your safety. Rule number three, always clean up after completing your experiment. At the end of each lab session, make sure to wipe down your workstation, wash and put away all the used glassware, and properly dispose of all of the waste. This ensures that the next student has a safe and clean lab space to start with. Since our lab space is shared among many students, failing to clean up exposes your peers to potential chemical hazards and can affect their progress in the lab. Your lab station and the common areas of the lab should be left cleaner at the end of the experiment than when you began. Which of the following is not appropriate lab etiquette? Select all that apply. All of these are unacceptable. You should never work in the lab when feeling sick, or start the lab without any supervision. More importantly, always give yourself enough time to clean up. If you have a class right after the lab, start cleaning up a few minutes before the end of your lab session. That's it for the essential things you should know before heading into the lab for the first time. Remember, this video only outlines the general safety rules for most chemistry labs. Some advanced labs may have additional requirements. It is always a good idea to review the specific safety guidelines provided by your lab instructor in advance of your lab session. That said, there is no need to feel nervous. As long as you respect and follow the safety rules, you will discover that hands-on science is both fun and exciting.